The very basic question is, why Enterprise Resource Planning, also called ERP, is required? To answer, let's examine this typical business scenario. A client approaches the sales team to buy a particular product. The sales team approaches the inventory department to check the availability of the product. In this case, the product is out of stock. The sales team approaches the production planning department to manufacture the product. The production planning team checks with the inventory department for availability of raw material. If raw material is not available within the inventory, the production planning team buys the raw material from the vendors. Then production planning forwards the raw materials to the shop floor execution for actual production. Once ready, the shop floor team forwards the goods to the sales team who in turn deliver it to the client. The sales team updates the finance department with revenue generated by the sale of the product. The production planning team updates the finance department with payments to be made to different vendors for raw materials. All departments approach HR for any human resource related issue. That is the typical business process of any manufacturing company. Some key inferences one could derive from the scenario would be a typical enterprise has many departments or business units. These departments or business units continuously communicate and exchange data with each other. The success of any organization lies in its effective communication and data exchange within these departments as well as associated third parties such as vendors, outsources, and customers. Based on the manners in which communication and data exchange is managed, enterprise software systems can be broadly classified as decentralized systems or centralized systems, which are also called ERP. Let's look at decentralized systems first. In a company with a decentralized system of data management, data is maintained locally at the individual departments. Departments do not have access to information or data of other departments. To identify the problems arising from decentralized enterprise management systems, let's look at the same business process again. The customer approaches the sales team for a product, but this time he needs the product on an urgent basis. The sales team do not have real-time information access to the product's inventory. So they approach the inventory department to check the availability of the product. This process takes time and the customer chooses another vendor, leading to loss of revenue and customer dissatisfaction. Now suppose the product is out of stock and the sales team approaches the production planning team to manufacture the product for future use. The production planning team checks the availability of the raw materials required. Raw material information is separately stored by production planning as well as the inventory department. Thus, data maintenance cost goes up. A particular raw material required to manufacture the product is available in the inventory, but according to the database of the production planning team, the raw material is out of stock. So they go ahead and buy the raw material. Thus, material as well as inventory costs go up. Once the raw material is available, the shop floor department suddenly realizes they are short of workers. They approach the HR who in turn hire temporary employees at higher than market rates. Thus, labor cost increases. The production planning department fails to update the finance department on the materials they have purchased. The finance department defaults the payment deadline set by the vendor, causing the company loss of its reputation and even inventing a possible legal action. These are just a few of the many problems with decentralized systems. Some major problems with the decentralized system are numerous disparate information systems that are developed individually over time and are difficult to maintain. Integrating the data is time and money consuming. Inconsistencies and duplication of data. 
Lack of timely information leads to customer dissatisfaction, loss of revenue, and reputation. High inventory, material, and human resource costs. These are just some of the major drawbacks for which we need a solution. Well, the solution lies in centralized systems, that is ERP. In a company with a centralized system of information and data management, data is maintained at a central location and is shared with various departments. Departments have access to information or data of other departments. Let's look at the same business process again to understand how a centralized enterprise system helps overcome problems posed by a decentralized enterprise system. In this case, all departments update a central information system. When a customer approaches the sales team to buy a product on an urgent basis, the sales team has real-time information access to the products and in inventory, which is updated by the inventory department in the centralized system. The sales team responds on time, leading to increased revenue and customer delight. In case manufacturing is required, the sales team updates the centralized database. Production planning department is auto-updated by the centralized database for requirements. The production planning team checks the availability of the raw materials required via central database, which is updated by the inventory department. Thus, data duplication is avoided and accurate data is made available. The shop floor team updates their manpower status regularly in the central database, which can be accessed by the HR department. In case of a shortage of workforce, the HR team starts recruitment process with considerable lead time to hire a suitable candidate at market price. Thus, labor costs go down. Vendors can directly submit their invoices to the centralized enterprise system, which can be accessed by the finance department. Thus, payments are made on time and possible legal actions are avoided. The key benefits of the centralized system are it eliminates the duplication, discontinuity, and redundancy in data. It provides information across departments in real time. It provides control over various business processes. It increases productivity, provides better inventory management, promotes quality, reduces material cost, allows for effective human resources management, and reduces overhead while boosting profits. Better customer interaction, increased throughput, and improved customer service. Hence, a centralized enterprise management system is required. SAP is a centralized enterprise management system, also known as Enterprise Resource Planning. Let's look into the evolution of SAP Product Suite, SAP R2. It was a successor of RM1, a materials management module. It was a packaged software application that processed in real time on a mainframe computer. It integrated all of an enterprise's functions, such as accounting, manufacturing processes, supply chain, logistics and human resource. SAP R3 Successor of SAP R2 It was first launched in 1998, is regularly updated, and is market leader in ERP till date. Has many modules such as HR, Finance, MM, covering all enterprise functions. 3 stands for 3-tier architecture, presentation tier, logic tier, and data tier. Also known as SAP ERP. MySAP is a suite of products from SAP, including SAP R3. Other products in the suite are SRM, CRM, PLM, SCM. NetWeaver it is SAP integrated technology platform and is not a product in itself. It is the underlying technology for all the products in the MySAP suite. All the products in MySAP suite can run on a single instance of NetWeaver's SAP Web Application Server, also known as SAP Web AS. NetWeaver makes possible access of SAP data using simple HTTP protocol or even mobile.
This eliminates the need of installing and more importantly training an SAP client-side software. One of the principal reasons why SAP is so popular is that it is very flexible and customizable. It is said that if you have the time and money, you can make SAP software to drive your car on autopilot. One way to achieve this flexibility is to break SAP system into different modules like HR, finance, and so on, which emulate business processes of that particular department or business unit. You can integrate one module with other or even third-party interfaces. Now depending upon your organization, you can have just one module or a few or all the modules of SAP implemented. Also you can have integration with third-party systems. It is also possible to integrate modules from different ERP vendors. So you can integrate PP module from SAP with HR module of PeopleSoft. The various SAP modules available are Financial modules like financial accounting, controlling, etc. Logistics modules like materials, sales, etc. Human resource management modules. Cross application modules which essentially integrate SAP with other software applications. For our learning purposes, we will focus on SAP HR module. SAP HR provides comprehensive business processes which map all HR activities in an enterprise. Highly customizable and can support very large number of employees. The various sub-modules or functionalities supported by SAP HR. Recruitment. Training and development. Time management. Employee benefits. Payroll, travel, cost planning, reporting, ESS and MSS. We will look into the details of the sub-modules later in the tutorials. To access SAP, double-click on the SAP Logon pad. You are shown a list of servers that you could log into. Depending on your system settings you will see multiple servers listed, like one for production, one for QA, one for development and so on. Select a server. In the next screen enter your user ID and password. You are taken to SAP's Easy Access menu. At the top, you will see the menu bar. Next, you will see the standard toolbar, where you have options to print, find, scroll, etc. In SAP system, in order to view or maintain any data, or access different business processes, you need to know the corresponding transaction. Every transaction has a unique code. For example, transaction code to maintain personal data is PA30. To access the transaction, in the command prompt, enter PA30 and hit enter. You are taken to personal data maintenance screen. If you notice the title bar changes in accordance with the transaction you are currently in. To go back to the initial screen click the back button. Alternatively. If you do not want to remember the transaction codes, a tree is provided with all the transactions available. Navigate in the tree. Double click on the corresponding transaction name. You are taken to the same screen as earlier. Suppose you do not want to navigate so much to access a transaction. Right-click on it and select Add to Favorites. The transaction is added to your favorites. 
at the bottom of the screen you will notice a message bar. This bar has three colors. Red, for errors. Yellow, for warnings. Green, for success. If you double click on the bar, detailed information of the message is reflected. At the bottom, you will see various system related information, like the client, or the program, you are currently in. To get help in SAP, select the corresponding screen element and press F1. Suppose I want help on command prompt, pressing F1 gives me a very detailed help document. That is it to the SAP GUI.